Laura Nielsen, uh, just tell me a little bit about the squad that you have chosen to face Ireland in Dublin New on November 19th. Are there any big changes from the teams that played here in Kalma? Uh, yes, there are. There are two changes. Two of our players has been moved up to the, to the first team. Uh, so that's great for them. Uh, that means we, we have to uh, reorganise a little bit, but uh, I feel that we are uh, uh, in the right uh, progress of, of the way that we are playing. Uh, Dejan Kulisevsky is a very important player for you, or has been a very important player for you in the under-21 setup. How, how much of a blow is it to lose him for these important games, or for this important game? Well, it, of course, uh, when you lose your, uh, one or even two uh, of your best players, uh, that will have an effect on the team, but that means somebody else uh, is going to go, uh, go in, in, in the squad and, and do well, and hopefully they can... Uh, show that they are really good players as well. So uh, it's going to be uh, interesting in that way. Uh, does anything about the Irish team surprise you when you played them here in Sweden a few weeks ago? I think they, they were very well organised. Uh, they seem to be playing together for, for a longer period. Uh, and and uh, they did uh, really well against us. Um, you've been involved in the development of young footballers now for a long time as a coach back in Sweden after all those years in England. Uh, your job, I suppose, is to create players that can play for the A team, and you have a certain amount of players from Sweden's Allsvenskan here. What's that league like in terms of being able to develop players? Can you develop players in that league, or do you prefer to see them move abroad to England, to Italy, to Holland? I think it's uh, it's. Uh a thing that it could be very good to play in Allsvenskan for the, for the younger players because it's a, quite a tough league. Uh, but at the same time, if you want to go all the way up to the to the, the A team, the national team, then then you need to go abroad uh, to get more experience and, and play better players and, and play with better players and, and get the ad education that brings. But Allsvenskan is a uh, is a good window to start in, uh, so we get the first team experience uh, to, to, to go and, and uh, develop yourself, uh, get the first team football. Uh, that's, I think that's uh, the key thing, uh, well, the key thing for young players. It's playing first team football where it really counts. Every point counts, uh, the players around you are older, not the same age. Uh, and all that things that uh, comes comes with that in, in training sessions, in matches, and so on. So it's a, it's a good start if you if you uh, as a young player want to go all the way. Back when you were playing in the Premier League in England, uh, there was a lot of Swedes, uh, a couple of Norwegians, there was a lot of Irish and Scottish players there, but they don't seem to get as many chances anymore. Would you prefer to see one of your players maybe go to the Premier League or go to a slightly smaller club in a smaller league to develop after they leave their domestic league here? I think uh, the key thing is is when they leave Sweden, it's, it's going somewhere where they keep on playing first team football. Yeah. I think too many of the players that move abroad nowadays is that they uh, end up uh, on the bench or not even on the bench and that means uh, it becomes a hold in, in the progress of being a, a good football. Uh, because uh, if you're used to playing like you know, 30 to 40 games a year and then suddenly you're not playing anything. Uh, of course, uh, in younger years, that, that's a, a, a big blow. So uh, I prefer them to go somewhere where they can really play first-team football and, and get more of the progress. Yeah. Well, then there is the point. Boyan Georgic, who played for AIK here in Sweden, but then went to Manchester United, actually went from Roma Poika. He was sent to be He was training every day with David Beckham, Roy Keane, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But do you think that it's the actual competitive games, playing on a, a Tuesday night at Stoke and that kind of thing, that's what develops players? Yeah, I think so, because, uh, uh, like you said, uh, it's, it's great to, to play with uh, excellent players uh, week out and week in, but uh, you need the matches. You, you need uh, those matches that really count, uh, not play uh, just training matches or, or in, in some, somewhere where the point doesn't count as much. Because uh, if you play first team football, like I said, every point is, is counting. You have people around you that will push you, you will shout to you if you're not doing the job and all the things that, that uh, you have to do if you want to be a first-team uh, football player. And, and uh, I think uh, if you can have both, great. But if, you, if you're going to choose, choose to, to play first-team football.
he says every point counts of course and every point counts in this qualification process but you know there is that balance of you know if you're going to create players for the national team how important is it for you to qualify for these finals with these players well uh, for, for me uh, qualifying is is great uh, and, and we work in our utmost to, to, to go all the way but at the same time uh, Producing players for the for the for the A team is is uh, the key. Uh, so uh, this time uh, we just have to to uh, congratulate the players. So it, it goes all, all the way up, and uh, we keep on fighting for for the points to take us to to the finals. And uh, finally, there's a lot of people may not have seen that much of your career over recent years since you left England and then came back to Sweden. What have you been doing in the meantime? I know you've been coaching in the top division here. How does life look for Roland Nielsen today? Well, uh, like you said, I, I, was, I was a coach for a club uh, under uh, a number of years. Uh, uh, but after that, I, I felt I wanted to do uh, something different. Uh, and then uh, this opportunity uh, came along and, and I've been coaching young players, national players. Uh, and done that now for, for five years and uh, it's, it's great. And then of course one final question we have to ask you about this game in Tallis Stadium. Sweden lost 3-1 here at home and I'm sure the competitive man that I know you to be that, that disappointed you. What are you going to do differently when you get to Stephen Kenny's team in front of you in Dublin? Well we know it's going to be a very tough game, we know that. Uh, we have to play uh, like we did in the last two games. Uh, we need to be uh, more solid uh, as, as, a, as a team than we, we were at home. We, I think we, we lost our way in a bit because we played at home and we wanted to show the crowds that we are good players. Uh, now we know is we are going to meet a, a very good side and now we have to think uh, more uh, uh, cynically, perhaps? cynically and, and uh, more together as a team.